I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you for watching this video at Orchidaria. So in this video I'm going to talk about bacterial brown spot and how to identify it and how to treat it. So bacterial brown spot is caused by misting the orchid and leaving that mist or watering the orchid and leaving the water on top the leaf. That water sits on top the leaf for a long period of time and it causes necrosis which is the death of the plant tissue and without that plant tissue in place bacteria will just come in and infest your orchid. Now this is accelerated by lower temperatures and stagnant air if you do not have air circulation. So you can have great temperatures. You bought your orchid in the summer. Excellent. Don't do what I did buy them in the winter. When your orchid gets brown spots that will turn black and keep growing this is caused by a bacteria called Acidrovax or Pseudomonas. Acidrovax will not stop. It keeps growing on the orchid until you either intervene. Most orchids do not have the capability to fight a severe case like this by itself. If it's very small and just starting off, some orchids can, but most orchids cannot. Now to really tell if it's bacterial brown spot, the the spots will start really small and you can tell in this case right here they're small and they start as brown then they move to black then they're going to try to pull all the nutrients around them so it turns they, they have like a little halo a lighter yellow color around them and they're just going to keep pulling the nutrients out until they take over the whole leaf how to know if it's not bacterial brown spot if the small spots take over more than one third of the leaf and it's one single color like your kid got an ink bottle and just poured it over the leaf, that's not bacterial brown spot. That is actually black rot and that is more severe really. If the black spots are on the roots or the pseudobulbs, that's also not bacterial brown spot because bacterial brown spot will take the leaf and it doesn't have to do with the roots. Blackening of the roots is something else. Also the tips of the orchid, if they are turning black, it's not bacterial brown spot. It's one of these three things that I can't pronounce and I'll just put them right there. So if the tips of your orchids are turning black and the black is starting to progress towards the center of your leaf, that's not bacterial brown spot. The very tip of your orchid if it turns black that could be over fertilization but it doesn't keep growing now the difference here is because we're talking about something that keeps growing now also if the spots are not circular but they're longer they're elongated they're like pencil lines down the middle of your orchid that's also not bacterial brown spot that's Gynardia leaf spot and it's not bacterial brown spot and also if you start to have white spots on your leaf uh, along with the black spots that's not bacterial brown spot because the white spots are spores so you're dealing with a fungus so the treatment is going to be a little different you'll need to apply a fungicide and not a bactericide how did this bacteria get on my orchid in the first place so at the construction store of course they get plants, they sell plants, but they sell cement more than they sell plants. So they're going to just water them anyway. And in this cold weather, that water does not evaporate. If you live in a hotter climate, that water will evaporate quickly. So you don't have that much, many problems, but especially during winter, if you're going to water, be careful with the leaves. You're not going to pour water on top of everything and leave it. Of course, in nature, water does get in the crown water does get on the leaves but it evaporates extremely fast because of the hot wind currents that are that are constantly flowing through the forest so it's the water that sits on this orchid inside your home where it's colder you're in winter so it's colder there's no airflow because you don't have the fan on most of us do not turn on the fan in winter and this water just sits on the orchid day and night and day and night. And what's worse is that in the morning we think, oh, my relative humidity is like 29. I'm going to miss this thing again. So you see the problem. It's like a never ending circle. It has to 
get water, it has to get relative humidity, it has to have a fan on it, it has to evaporate quickly, and if it doesn't, it gets this. Another way to get this is if I have a communal dunking process of where I get one orchid and I water it, spoof, and I drown it in water. And I use the same bucket with the same water and I get one orchid and do another orchid and do another orchid, one right after the other. And one of them has, well, if I get this orchid and do that, I'm just going to spread this to my entire orchid collection because this is extremely contagious in between orchids. I have to hold this in my hand because I have a temptation to touch a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm trying not to touch my other orchids. That's why I'm holding this thing to remind myself. By the way, I hope to see you in the comments below. Tell me what your orchid is doing and if you've had this and how you treated it. Another thing, keep your tools sterilized. We also have a, okay, today's repotting day. So I'm going to cut off all the spikes and I cut off one, I cut off the other and I cut off this leaf and I forget to sterilize my instruments in between each one. Always sterilize. Do one orchid, then sterilize your equipment, then another orchid, and sterilize your equipment. You have to sterilize your equipment. This stuff really spreads. I mean really spreads. To the best part of this video, how am I going to treat this? Because this is horrible. So, since it is a bacteria, I need a bactericide. The first thing is Physan 20. Now, I love Physan 20 because it's an algicide, it's a fungicide, it's a bactericide, it's a viricide. It. Viricide? Really? This little thing, it kills everything that you can imagine. If you don't have Physan 20 in your area, you can use hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide is water at, with an extra oxygen inside of it. So what you'll want to do, if you're using Physan 20, you'll need to dilute this in one tablespoon per two gallons. You can also treat the bacteria with cinnamon. Now, this is the hardest part because out of all of these, the Physan 20, the hydrogen peroxide, you can get on the roots with no problem. It's not going to hurt the roots. Now, cinnamon is a dissecant. It will, it will pull the humidity out of this, out of anything it gets in touch. That's why you can't get a cinnamon and put it on a spoon and actually eat it pure. That what that does is it pulls all the humidity out of the. It immediately pulls all the humidity out of whatever it touches and it dries up. That's why it's going to dry up your throat and your throat's going to close a little bit and you will have an immediately gag response. Now this leaf is more than, I mean, even if I, I don't have to treat this leaf. Oh, well. Hang in there, little orchid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat the remaining parts of this with Physan 20. I'm going to spray it on here. I'm going to dilute the Physan 20 with water. I'm going to spray this on here twice a day. Now, why do I say twice a day? The instructions say once a day, but this is a really severe case and I'm probably not going to save this orchid. And how do I know that? Look at the discoloration in the stem. It's already yellow. The rot has already spread it to its initial stages inside the stem and that is going to be extremely hard to get back. So this orchid is probably a goner but you never give up on orchids. So they're just like kids. You don't give up on them. So I'm going to treat this with Physan 20. I'm going to mist it in the morning. I can even do a soak where I'm going to soak the whole orchid. In this case it probably might be better because the case is so severe. And it wouldn't hurt the roots either to give a little soak in this solution. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep doing that until it gets better. And this orchid is going to stay in isolation. Now, the best thing for me to do right now to actually give this orchid a chance is to cut off these, these blooms. Now, why do I say that? because these blooms are pulling a lot of energy out of the orchid. I mean, they're, they're really sucking up all that energy. 
I hate to do this, but I mean, look at that. Oh, that, that, that's... And you can also tell it's bacterial brown spot because of the smell. Oh, gosh. If this video has increased your knowledge in orchid care, please give it a like button. That really helps me to know what videos to do more of or what videos to stay away from. And also, if you want to keep track of what your orchid is doing and write it down and have like a calendar of your treatment methods, I am working on an orchid diary. So in like a journal or a notebook, that is under construction. It's almost ready. If you want to know more about that, go to orchidaria.com slash orchid journey. Let me tell you a secret. When you buy an orchid at a construction store or your home improvement store, really look at the leaves. In any case, if you have not seen this video down here, it talks about how to identify a healthy orchid and to analyze if your orchid care is adequate or not by these 13 signs, click on this video. And this video up here is going to be another tip about caring for problems with orchids. I wish you the best in your orchid care and happy cultivating.